Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to hearing number eight of the 182 period of sessions. That is a hybrid period of sessions of the Inter American Court of Human Rights. The title of this here is the situation of cultural rights and freedom of expression in Brazil. This is a hearing that was requested by a group of civil society organizations, and we would like to welcome you all. We also would like to welcome the representatives of the state. Once again, we would like to thank them for participating in this type of hearings of the commission. I also would like to kindly greet Chan Charab, that is representative of the Office of High Commissioner of the United Nations for Human Rights for South America. Welcome, Jan, and I would like also to greet my colleagues from the commissioners who will be uh, in this hearing with me. I would like to greet Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena and Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, and I would like to greet also my colleagues, a special rapporteur for economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz, the special rapporteur for freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca. I'm your, at your service, I'm Joel Hernandez. I will be chairing this hearing as country rapporteur uh, for Brazil. We will distribute the time of the hearing. We will have 90 minutes and we will organize the time as follows. Civil society organizations will have 20 minutes for presenting. After that, the state will have another 20 minutes. And after that, we will give the floor to Mr. Jan Jarab for seven minutes. And after that, the members of the commission will have 20 minutes to present. The remaining time will be distributed between civil society organizations and the state, uh, giving you equal time. Please uh, pay attention to the clock on the screen so that we can stick to time. I also would like to tell you that this hearing includes simultaneous interpretation into Portuguese. You can see that on Zoom's up at the lower part, uh, you will have a glove and you can select the interpretation and the language uh, you would like to listen to. Also for those who are following us on social media, I would like to let you know that we have closed captioning. I also would like to greet the Assistant Executive Secretary, Ms. Maria Claudia Pulido. Without further ado, we can begin today's hearing. I would like to give the floor to the organizations requesting the hearing. Please introduce themselves and indicate the organization to which you belong. Guilherme Coelho, good afternoon, Mr. President, commissioners. Good afternoon to everyone here present today. I would like to thank you for the opportunity of having this hearing that is key to present this movement to uh, it has to do with the political framework that will be discussed here. MOBI is a movement for artistic expression in Brazil, composed by a series of organizations of the civil society, such as Archigo de Sinovi, Archigo Quinto, Hedge Liberdade, and several organizations. In 2019, was created before different violations related uh, to the right for expression artistic due to the authoritarianism that exists against the artistic sector in Brazil. We want to denounce this structural um, framework that results in several uh, violations of rights that are key for the democracy. This started in 2019, characterized by uh, targeting culture as an enemy of the uh, state. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone here today. Commissioners, I am Denise Dora, Regional Director of Archigo de Sinovi. 
this has been existed for 10 years. There has been a project denied by the federal uh, government because it says that uh, artistic movements should be uh, seek for uh, the uh, to um, portray a god and several uh, plays have been censored different black uh, artists were removed their names of the Fonaris Foundation, an institution that preserves and promotes the Afro-Brasilidade. The general uh, procurator of the of the government has also prohibited different plays portraying the dictatorship. There is a political profile being analyzed of the different artists in order to approve their uh, different plays and artistic uh, works. What these cases have in common is that they show a serious framework of human rights violations, especially related to artistic expression and cultural rights. This uh, has happened since 2019, and it shows a coordinated agenda by the Brazilian state and authoritarian actions against the artistic sector and the cultural sector. There are several episodes and there are 170 cases that have been documented and denounced because of censorship. A platform that has been uh, developed, the map of censorship, to give account of these cases. The artistic freedom of expression is a human right enshrined in Article 19 of the Declaration of Human Rights that also promote, uh, protects other uh, types of uh, ex ways of expressions. In particular, we are talking about artistic expressions and um, the different stages of the cultural chain, such as creation, distribution, exhibition, and access. In Brazil today, that freedom is constantly attacked. In there is cultural censorship that is explicit and measures have an administrative or legal characteristic with the cancellation in a unilateral way, cancellation of contracts and also lack of funding for this artistic, for the artistic sector. There is uh, uh, their hate speech against this culture and artistic sector especially against artists that uh, do not agree with the government. This uh, atmosphere of persecution can be evidenced by different cases and data shown by the map of censorship. Many of these violations were uh, carried out by the federal government. 30% of the cases have to do with uh, sexual orientation of expressions of uh, ra race or more expressions. 62% of these expressions have to do with limiting cultural expression and 48% are related to lack of policies uh, in the cultural sector. Also, we have identified the main uh, mechanisms of violations, such as administrative censorship, judicial censorship, judicial action, legislative measures, institutional measures that are restrictive, and discourse actions. These cases confirm that there is a violation that is systematic um, to censor the cultural rights of the Brazilian citizens. The state machinery has been used to dissolve uh, public uh, structures and policies, corrupting the uh, uh, cultural sector. The most evident example have to do with the extinction of the Ministry of Culture by the current government and the use of the Foundation Palmares to persecute this movement. We request the Commission to give priority 
to protect the uh, Brazilian culture from the state. This is phenomenon that not only affects the culture, but the democracy as a whole. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Tiago Tao. I'm executive producer of a festival in Itapau. After different e events with the uh, federal incentive law, this festival suffered first censorship by the FUNAP, an organ related to the Secretary of Culture, the federal government, in a project that seek uh, funding in, in connection with the uh, law for cultural incentives. The goal of music is the glory of God and renovation of um, the soul. These were words uh, pronounced by Johann Sebastian Bach. So they use these words in order to say that the festival um, is in favor of fascism and against democracy. The federal public ministry started a collective uh, action with uh, 12 different attorneys, uh, federal uh, congressmen and congresswomen requesting the annulment of the uh, Special Secretary of Culture due to an attempt against the uh, freedom of cultural expression as they did not carry out a technical cultural analysis of the festival festival's proposal. This forced the relevance for the um, development of the music festival in the state of Bahia. And it is very important for us to stay alert and fight against practices uh, developed by public uh, officials. This is a serious case of censorship against cultural expression and the well-being of the Brazilian citizenship. Go music, good go festival of Japan. Hello, my name is Wagner Mover. I am a director. I have publicly said that the movie that I have done was victim of censorship by the federal government. This was about the military censorship started by the government of Bolsonaro. In 2019, we were taken into account for a fund of uh, production complementation and budget for the Brazilian audiovisual sector. And within this framework, there were two requests made by the uh, by this company to produce um, to make its production. I'm sending these documents so you can understand the bureaucratic details and the way in which Ancine uh, made its movie. What I can say here is that those requests were denied by the Ancine and the president uh, openly spoke about this citing specific, quoting specific cases of movies such as Bruna, Sufirtinha, and it was at a point at which these uh, cases of explicit censorship uh, exploded um, place with the topics that were not aligned with the government's ideology, in particular LGBT uh, topics in Marigala case. Um, it's a movie about a character of Brazil's history with whom the president and those persons in Brasilia do not agree with. So this is my statement. They asked me to speak for two minutes and that's all I would like to greet you for organizing this event. It's very sad that in 2021, we have to speak about censorship, but at the same time, it's very important for you to know about these cases. 
Thank you, and I wish you a very successful debate. I was taken to jail together with Gilberto Gil in December 1968. And some days later, after the Institutional Act number no. 5, and today, it's very sad for me to see people going out to the street requesting the comeback of IA5. And I see that this actually became true when our president was elected, and he represents a threat to democracy by saying very often things that we never thought we were going to hear. And mainly, this is related to a global phenomenon. A wave, an anti-democratic wave. And what used to be called the right wing and then became the extreme right wing and then the old right. Whatever. But we will need to know how to deal with this and overcome all of these by defending freedom of speech, the variety in artistic creations and the way in which we understand life. I believe that the world will need to change a lot in order to overcome this phenomenon. But we'll do it. Thank you. Daniela, por favor. Daniela, acho que está mutado. You are muted, Daniela. Estão me ouvindo? Now you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm an artist and a human rights activist. My name is Daniela Mercury, Mr. President, members of the Commission. Democracy is being attacked all over the world, as Caetano said. And we see the decrease of freedom of speech and in the independence of the judicial power. And we need to say stop and react. And this is why we are here in this commission. In Brazil, the Human Rights Observa Observatory of the, of the judicial power checked that we are under attack. And this is being done in order to suppress freedom of artistic activities. And the new public policy inaugurates an unprecedented type of censorship, stopping us from having our freedom of artistic activities. And also there's a law that was already voted by the Congress. Also in Brazil, there was a request to the Supreme Court to declare the unconstitutionality of this mentioned public policy because it has created a terrible situation for culture, also anti-democratic. Considering this law, let me tell you concrete situation, a 75% reduction in the promotion of cultural projects, taking artists to unemployment and going hunger in Brazil. We have an electorate democracy, but that's it, with no rights or freedoms. In Brazil, we have this pattern where different social groups are being attacked and where wrong information is being disseminated. The opposition is in attack to the democratic process in Brazil is, very, is being very much affected and was accelerated by attacks to the Supreme Court control bodies being affected too, attacks against members of the opposition, 
attacks to the press and journalists. The attack to freedom of speech is also affecting those who are supposed to guarantee our artistic rights, guaranteed in our constitution. And this is substituting the direct censorship of our dictatorship. And this new strategy is actually prohibiting and, in, and preventing us from having access to funding and also, also only those cultural projects aligned to the government are receiving funds. It is very important for us to have our freedom to promote our artistic activities. And by having this autocracy in the Brazilian government, they are trying to foster populism and put criticism away, and they are fostering discrimination and hate. We believe also that there is a multiplicity here that is very important. Populist leaders are fostering the credibility crisis in institutions, the social polarization, and public, basic public services not being well rendered in order to reach their goals. Health and education are also being affected in this democratic crisis. Historians say that this inequality leads to unemployment and hunger. In our country, we see a lot of this and inequality, and we see the awakening of the justice institutions, and they are not doing their job. Also, the government is betting on trying to ban those going against the government, mainly in the case of artists. The official discourse is against human rights and different liberties and freedoms. And they were, for example, canceling the tributes to black leaders, or also they are allowing the invasion of indigenous lands. They are going against memory activities and also they are affecting cultural centers. They are not allowing transparency. And in the terms of availability of the use of different cultural funds, they are saying that there are no funds for cultural activities. Therefore, the commission must investigate the violations of cultural and artistic activities in Brazil because we are a great democracy and we want for our country to be democratic. We are at that point where the group of attacks can take us to lack of progress in terms of democracy. Let's react and I'm here for you. Thank you. Mari, está mutada, por favor. Hemos agotado el tiempo, eh, pero con we are running out of time, but we are going to give you some additional minutes. Please try to close your presentation. Mr. President, my name is Mary Stogler. I'm from the collective 342 artists. And let me tell you, recognizing the historic role of the commission against authoritarianism in our region and the search for memory, truth, and justice and non-repetition I would like to respectfully request first for you to constantly monitor the lack of artistic freedom in Brazil with all the authoritarianism and to act against this backlash, particularly considering the electorate project and process with democracy at risk. Second, to carry out a report and a visit to Brazil in 2022 with those rapporteurships related to these issues. Three, to try to see what is happening with the Brazilian state, considering the reports against the state in terms of the censorship. Four, to adopt measures to protect artists that were threatened or suffering from censorship in their different spheres in order to exercise their freedoms and rights with no risk. Thank you very much. Five, 
to move forward in order to develop inter-American standards and to carry out a thematic report in terms of what is happening with the artistic region, uh, artistic expression in the region. Thank you. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Eh, Thank para... you. Now to offset the time in excess used by the petitioners, we are going to give the representatives of the state the same amount of time. You can use the floor for 22 minutes. Uh, please introduce yourselves uh, and indicate the agency that you represent. I would like to give the floor to representatives of the state. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good afternoon, everyone, commissioners, petitioners, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Brazilian state, I would like to thank you for summoning us for this public hearing. The Brazilian government has trying to improve public policies in order to deal with the different challenges related to these important areas, respecting the constitutional principles like freedom of speech, and prohibition of censorship. By accepting the invitation to this hearing, the government has a dialogue and democratic spirit, and we are at your disposal to have a wide and constructive dialogue with the civil society and with this honorable commission. Apart from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that I already presented, we also have the presence of the Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights and the Special Secretariat for Culture of the Ministry of Tourism. In order to start with the presentation by the Brazilian state, I will give the floor to Mr. Oliveira, coordinator of freedom of speech expression and academic freedoms from the Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, commissioners, civil society and participants. My name is Warden Hertz de Oliveira from the Ministry of Women, Families and Human Rights from the Department of Freedom of Speech. And I would like to stress that Brazil is a country where we promote liberties, freedom and democracy. All the fundamental freedoms are being fostered and respected, especially those related to freedom of speech and artistic expression. The Brazilian state has a very strong commitment to the rule of law and democracy. The federal constitution establishes democracy as the foundation of the republic and freedom of speech is a fundamental right for us and also very important for everyone. Therefore, the free manifestation of thought and the free expression of artistic and intellectual activities are not or are there regardless of the government in turn. And also, these are rights that are in the international treaties that Brazil participates in, like Article 13 of the American Convention on Human Rights, protecting also the freedom to disseminate information and ideas from every area, including the artistic area. The Brazilian state recognizes what is being explained, but we do see that there might be interferences in the circulation of ideas. The Brazilian state also guarantees the equality of opportunities and the non-discrimination in the dissemination of information in the media, also the independence of the media. In the same regard, we in the constitution guarantee the access to the sources of national culture, and we will support and foster the appreciation of cultural manifestations. Now, the representative of the culture secretariat will talk about what we are doing in the promotion of cultural rights. In Brazil, we have laws and programs for the fostering and also funds to foster culture that are there for any physical individual. 
And finally, access to information is very important. The Brazilian state guarantees the access to information through public authorities, admitting also that there are some exceptions exposed and presented in their very own legislation. Moreover, the Brazilian state would like to stress that the law of access to information was passed in 2011, also considering the inter-American situation in terms of human rights. Therefore, we believe in democracy through the full exercise of freedoms. In this regard, state institutions work in a safe and stable way so that every citizen can exercise their freedom of speech, thought, intellectual, beliefs also for the media and for cultural activities and also there is plurality and the free structure structure of ideas we would like to remain doing this in a balanced and independent way considering the different activities from the three branches of government in order to serve the people and to guarantee the full exercise of activity the access to judicial ways is facilitated and is fully available to every citizen. Also, let me tell you about the way in which the public ministry works in terms of human rights as established in the constitution. This is a permanent institution where the state can defend the democratic regime and the collective and individual interests. These institutions are at the disposal of citizens when they feel that their rights are being violated. And let me tell you that we have a program for human rights defenders where we have people communicating and we are accompanying those in risk and those that are being threat in the sphere of human rights, communicators and activists in the entire national state. And this was, this was regulated by a presidential decree. And in the case of journalists, we see the concern of the Brazilian state to protect the media members as human rights defenders in Brazil. Therefore, we have full freedom of speech guaranteed in every dimension, in the academia, in the media, in politics, in religion, in philosophy, and mainly in what we are discussing here, the freedom to for cultural manifestations. Therefore, I would like to reaffirm our commitment to human rights and our constant dialogue with the Inter-American System of Human Rights and with the Special Rapporteurship for Human uh, for Freedom of Speech of this Honorable Commission. Now I will give the floor to my colleague representing the Special Cultural Secretariat. Good afternoon. I am Andrea Porziunculo. I'm the Special Secretary of the Special Secretariat of Culture. And I'm going to speak briefly as a, about some public policies adopted by the federal government. I would like to highlight the importance of culture for the federal government. And we understand that culture is not uh, just a place where uh, some activity takes place, but a key uh, aspect for civilization to prosper. In culture, or that thing that cannot be described that is part of our uh, nation, we have to um, value what we believe to be part of our culture. Without culture, there is no civilization. And we would just be animals with two legs and culture is something sacred and every action in society is related to that. What is at stake is not the importance of the federal government uh, to culture, but the morality that has been applied uh, within the mechanisms to uh, foster culture. We have identified 
10% of the principal companies of, in Brazil uh, supported 80% of public resources. And there have been several bureaucratic policies for the decentralization of that to dismantle that small elite and favor the population as a whole. So what is being discussed here is uh, to what point can the federal government apply those public policies for the public, create a political narrative that is uh, trying to uh, talk about censorship, which is upset in a country where democracy exists. There are um, democratic policies to foster culture. And you have to know that the federal government values culture. I'm going to mention some statistics. In 2019, 2020, our law to provide incentive to culture, to promote cultural activity in those two years hit record regarding the investment 8 billion reais um, have been invested in the cultural area, developing different uh, cultural activities without any kind of censorship or aesthetic appreciation. We have also invested almost 3 billion reais this year to support in 2020, the cultural sector that has been impacted by a policy that had to do with a restriction of human liberties that closed the livelihood and economic um, means. So we invested 3 billion of reais for the states to develop cultural areas and support small artists. We invested more than 400 million reais in the audiovisual sector, especially small companies that were suffering because of previous policies. We invested more than 400 million reais to support a cultural sector that has been impacted by those previous measures that closed the economy of the uh, country. We also have 600 uh, million reais that will be invested for the development of audiovisual content. And this is the highest investment uh, in the history of culture. No, at no point in our history, such investment was made in the cultural sector. So it's not about whether the government is uh, planning a boycott to the sector. It has to do with what ha we have done. We rescued uh, culture. We developed culture for common men. We have promoted and popularized mechanisms to publicly promote these laws that were restricted to a small uh, uh, business elite that use all type of uh, arguments to keep uh, in power. What we did was a revolution, a popular evolution, a real democratization of public uh, goods that has been affected just that elite that was used to monopolizing resources. So these uh, policies are objective and complex with legislative with the legislation uh, and our constitution and uh, trying to achieve this goal to popularize culture and we are uh, defenders of freedom in our government there is a bill to guarantee uh, freedom of expression uh, so that uh, bigger structures of technology of platforms could censor our uh, population. So the federal government uh, guaranteed freedom of expression through those policies. The federal government also suspended and the law of national security. Bolsonaro was the one who modified this um, law in order to guarantee um, an update and 
a policy to guarantee freedom. So, in fact, we are trying to uh, face the lack of uh, conformity uh, regarding the access to those resources that were dominated by 10% of the uh, companies that were part of the financial elite of our country. So now we have had a popular national election. There is a monopolistic uh, speech trying to um, hinder these policies. Any other speaker on the part of the state? No? Okay, then speaker? we conclude the state's intervention. Thank you very much for your participation. Now I give the floor to Mr. Jan Jarab, representative of the Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations for Human Rights. Mr. Jarab, you have the floor. Dear commissioners, representatives of the Brazilian states, uh, petitioners, everyone here present, I thank your invitation by the uh, Inter-American Commission for the Office on Human Rights. It's an honor for me to be here. Please allow me to start by making a reference to the special rapporteur on cultural rights report on the right to freedom of expression and artistic creation of 2003, which includes the right of all people to experiment and contribute freely to artistic creation through individual or collective activities to have access and to enjoy arts and to disseminate its creations and works. The report addresses the limitations that curtail artistic expression, as well as financial and economic consequences that have an impact on those freedoms. The motivations to restrict these things use, are usually political, religious, cultural, or moral, or have a basis in economic interests or are a combination of all of them. The report highlights the positive actions by the state to support people to enjoy arts and artistic freedom. The report encouraged states to review with a critical view its practices to restrict the right for freedom of artistic expression, having into account its obligation to offer and guarantee this right. All people have the right to artistic expression, including the right to contribute freely all those creative works. The report highlights that the effects of artistic censorship or restriction that is not justified to the freedom of artistic expression are important and create important cultural losses. They create unsafe environments for those who are focused on artistic creation, Social and political debates are, are limited and there is an obstacle to democracy and they lead to self-censorship and the impoverishment of the cultural sphere. The states have the obligation to respect and guarantee the rights of all people to artistic creation and creativity and has to be taken into account by this analysis. In this context, I can I have to express my concern for the violations of uh, freedom of expression in Brazil, as mentioned by the petitioners, and defined as a dismantlement of the cultural sector, according to a monitoring uh, carried out by the liberty of artistic expression in Brazil. We've had 130 cases of censorship of artistic expressions in the, in the country in 2019. What's the magnitude of this curtailment and what are the experiences 
that artists are undergoing. This is essential to understand the scope of this uh, freedom. And for that, I congratulate the reports uh, drafted by the petitioners here. In Brazil, the barriers and the challenges shared by artists and journalists in their uh, enjoyment of freedom of speech are the result of restrictions and also of stereotypes that are rooted and social structured inequalities related to sexual orientation, race, gender identity, uh, among others. In its widest sense, cultural rights and freedom of expression are affected by a context that includes uh, political uh, and structural racism, lack of uh, relationship between authorities and social society, and a strong movement of anti-rights, particularly uh, in relation to gender issues. I wanted to comment on the freedom of speech um, for women, which is key, to underscore things that are not being complied by the traditional media for some time, and also from the artistic perspective. women today in Brazil face additional challenges of those who are being faced by their male counterparts. There are defamation uh, campaigns online, cyber attacks against them and against their platforms and websites. So in this context, we recommend that there are measures to avoid this uh, censorship of the cultural state in Brazil. We encourage the Brazilian state to avoid any type of uh, harassment of journalists and artists. We also call on the uh, deep investigation of all attacks against artists and journalists, even those who are in online. The office also recommends a training and development of protocols in, on digital security to improve security in the online world. We encourage uh, accountability and safe communication. And let me end by re re repeating our commitment to continue working with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights to strengthen the freedom of expression and the right to culture in Brazil, as well as the protection of artists, communicators, and to work with all the stakeholders to promote human rights. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jan Jarab, for your intervention. Thank you for repeating your work on these issues. Now we will give the floor to the Inter-American Commissioner. I ask Commissioner Margaret McMacaulay if she wants to take the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I do indeed um, wish to make um, certain comments on, on this very important issue. Um, I, I think it, it is clear, uh, um, it, it has been made clear by both that um, artistic uh, expression and um, cultural expression um, is a form of the freedom of expression and freedom of speech is all involved in, in these, the right to express oneself. And what is clear to me is that the product of uh, um, um, artistic expression, whether culturally uh, or just personal artistic crea creations and so on, our intellectual property of the creator, be it a singular person or a group of persons. And being intellectual property, they are the private property of the, of the creator. And therefore, it behoves the state to honor, respect, and protect 
the private property of the creators. I, I listened to the um, statement of the representative from, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm really sorry. I tend to get involved in my thing and forget to the courtesies. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. And it is good of you to be here. And a special good afternoon to the representative of the United Nations and civil society and the ministries of the state. Thank you so much. Well, um, I'm referring, I was referring to the representative from the Ministry of, I believe it was women fam of family or gender and family um, affairs, um, the, who spoke about the investment of the government, um, mm. the great deal of money that the government has invested in, in the sector, cultural sector and artistic sector. And I do have a question for him um, because in the distribution of these investment resources, how are they distributed? How are they apportioned? Are uh, uh, the creators and civil societies and representatives of the various groups who create uh, uh, culturally and artistically invited to discuss the matter with you before any decision is made? Or does the ministry just decide to assign certain sums of money to certain groups without any consultation um, by the, those who are in fact entitled to, um, to uh, have their rights protected? And um, I also wanted to ask whether the state recognizes not only the fact of private property, but that this is part of the identity of these creators. Well, their end product is part of their identity, their selves, their psyche, and, and their spiritual inner selves. And that no state should seek in any way to censor or restrict their expression. Unless, of course, that the product, end product, would lead to criminal activity or hateful uh, actions in others or, or, or um, racial discrimination or gender discrimination or some other form of violation. If that is so, then the state does have a duty to intervene, to protect um, anyone from, from violation of, of their rights by this. But by and large, um, that is not the case. Um, and if it's in your allocation, um, you do not recognize the right and the privacy of the ownership of the products, it would be a serious violation by, by a state in curtailing and, and restricting the, the expressions in these forms of anyone. And we, do, uh, the, we hope that this, both the state and civil society here present and more will work with us, continue to work with us to ensure that there will always be, and the areas where they are not, and they have, there is restriction, will be stopped uh, um, for the self-expression by way of speech, artistic products, and, and, and physical materials, or orally, or in movement, or in writing, or any other form of expression. And of course, the bugbear, religious freedom, will not be restricted without lawful cause for the protection of others by the state. And the state will uphold its respect for the private property and intellectual property of these peoples. Thank you.
Gracias, Commissioner. Pregunto... Thank you, Commissioner. I ask Commissioner Rosemena if she wants to take the floor. Yes, thank you, Commissioner, President of this hearing. Well, uh, my greetings to the representative representatives of the civil society who has uh, provided the opportunity to have uh, such valuable and important information on an issue that, as I, as we were saying before the hearing started, when you speak about freedom of expression, but you uh, add artistic expression or cultural expression, there's a message as Commissioner Margaret was saying, related to the identity of persons, of their essence. So really, this has been an opportunity to have information of such uh, importance, and it's really imp uh, important to me. So the representatives of the state, thank you very much for the information you conveyed. It's part of the of a consideration uh, made by the state uh, at the beginning. It's, they mentioned a proposal for a dialogue, a proposal to um, reach a middle ground, because what we heard of uh, the arguments of uh, the state are, is different from what has been uh, conveyed by the civil uh, society organizations and I wanted to highlight or only to focus on all the fact of dismantling uh, institutions those who are responsible to promote culture uh, they've said that there is um, a direct impact on institutions so I would like to know if to the state, the argue, the allegations made related uh, to uh, the distribution or the allocation of money, or actually uh, the, the fact about institutions who are responsible to promote culture and to, to ensure this spaces so that uh, people have their own history so that the people uh, as a whole can have an essence as a civilization as mentioned by the state representatives. So this approach, which uh, is a, quite of a dilemma today because there's an investment in culture as the state uh, mentioned, but civil society thinks that this institutionality is being um, taken down or dismantled because there is uh, they present a map of censorship related to the different topics of cultural expression. So the allegations, the arguments that we have to explain these two different positions, which are so uh, unlike one another. So I would like really to have the civil society and state representatives to have a comment on that. But I, let me conclude by pointing out the need to highlight the role played by the Inter-American Commission related to these types of spaces that are created to find a middle ground between the different positions that may be uh, represented by these parties which may be confronted. The idea is not to confront points of view, but rather to find uh, points of converge convergence so that those allegations that are being uh, made, that are being used to explain different positions can be uh, bridged by the commission. This is all for the moment, commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor now to the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. Thank you, Commissioner Joel Hernandez. As chair of this hearing, I would like to especially greet the petitioner organizations and the representatives of the state for being here today. I would like to say 
that uh, the special rapporteur for expression, that is myself, is really concerned if, uh, today because artistic expression includes freedom of expression and we recognize the importance and the democratic power of art. Even all the type of expressions are protected by the Inter-American system, especially in Article 13 of the Convention. Uh, the Special Rapporteurship has established especially protected discourses, um, especially regarding the identity, identity of those who are expressing themselves. Uh, and I would like to mention some of the cases mentioned by the petitioners. Those are, for example, art artistic expressions that are related to Afro descendant identities. Among the concerns of these hearings, we are identifying some atypical allegations. And we would like for the state to provide answers, especially everything that had to do with restrictions to musical expressions and also expressions regarding freedom of faith and religion. And also uh, those restrictions that had to do with funding and also the creation of a hostile environment for artistic uh, expression. Art is a positive symptom of democracy. And art and artistic uh, allow us to understand reality from a different perspective. Art tends to be a vehicle to express thought and to express feelings and thoughts that sometimes cannot be um, transmitted using other formats. Art sometimes uh, it's very important uh, when there is collective fear and sometimes is one of the remedies to collective censorship. And that's why it's so important to protect it. And I would like to say that the level of the American system, we have discussed that the state should be neutral regarding content and its creation. I would like to ask two questions. Uh, the petitioners, said that there were 170 cases that were documented. I don't know if you could show us the deadline and the dates of those cases, and if there are any legal remedies or strategies for those cases, and if there are any outcomes. We know that in Brazil, there is a sound rule of law. And I have a question for the state. Uh, you made reference to an elite, and I would like to know why you're using this label. Uh, what's the legal source for that? We know that if there are objective mechanisms for uh, allocating advertising funds and so on, uh, that's important, but your strategy is an, an atypical one. And also, I think that the state should recon reconsider the use of those, those labels that could be hostile and have an important burden of ideology. Thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. Now I would like to give the floor to the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad García Muñoz. Thank you, Commissioner and Chair of this hearing. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I would like to greet the commissioners, my colleagues, the special rapporteur, and also I would like to greet the representatives of civil society and of the state. First, it's important to recognize the huge cultural power that Brazil is. And I would like to make the most of this opportunity to show my admiration and my respect as cultural rapporteur for the cultural diversity, for the music and for the art of Brazil. And I also would like to express my concern after this hearing. And this is related to other issues that we are monitoring in Brazil. It has to do with cultural rights. The hearing brings to the table some issues regarding freedom of expression that it's indivisible uh, in reg with regard to cultural rights. And we need to recognize how cultural rights should be are included in our inter-American system, in the Article 13 of the American Declaration, in Article 
um, 36 of the American Convention in Article 14 of the San Salvador Protocol that is monitored by the San Salvador Working Group. And we are assessing the uh, universal uh, periodic review of Brazil right now. I would like to recognize all the economic, social, cultural, environmental rights that have a specific characteristic that is implied in Article 26 of the Convention, that is progressiveness and non-regressiveness in their development. And that's why some of the information that you provided us with make us think whether that progressiveness and non-regressiveness principles are being respected. And we need to understand the impact of some decisions, such as a decision of the state and I would like to know the reasons of that decision to transform the Ministry of Culture into a Secretariat of Culture that is dependent on the Ministry of Tourism now. I also would like to hear uh, more from the state to understand the reasons why they decided to suspend the jazz festival and uh, the Marigel film. I'm concerned about that information. In addition, I am concerned about the impact that this can have on the uh, labor rights of artists. I'm also concerned, like my colleague from the special rapporteurship, um, sometimes we know that artists are common people. They are also workers. And I would like to know how the state is trying to measure the situation of artists, uh, artists in the context of the pandemic using these measures. And I would like to say that I'm at the disposal of all the parties in order to contribute to dialogue and to the improvement or the protection of economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. Thank you, Rapporteur. Because of time restraints, restraints, I will speak towards the closing of this hearing. And I would like to give the floor to my colleagues now. So we will have 10 minutes for the petitioners and 10 minutes for the representatives of the state so that they can make their final comments. I would like to give the floor to civil society organizations now. Good afternoon, everyone, Mr. President, commissioners. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here. I am Conrado Ubner, professor of constitutional law at the University of San Pablo, and I'm the director of LAUD. I am a full-time academic. I was the target of two attacks, legal attacks, not by coincidence, these authorities were linked to the federal government and the general DA and one of the ministers of the Supreme Court. They are accusing me of a crime and requesting my imprisonment due to my piece in the newspaper Folia de Sao Paulo. And these are just criticisms related to things that the government should be controlling. And this is related to intimidation. And they appeared then in the global report, Schools at Risk. And I am not actually experiencing this empire of freedom the Brazilian state has invoked and not this commitment from the rule of law. These attacks to freedom of speech in the academy are very much related to the attacks to our freedom. The state has not explained the violations, has not faced the arguments presented here, and the state has not respected the commission, the civil society, or the public for this hearing. The rights in paper are just abstract commitments that are not related to the reality. And this is very similar to the behavior during the dictatorship in the 70s in Brazil. But this is not the only thing that we would like to say today. Let me tell you about the attacks on the constitution and human rights 
the Brazilian government in international forums were distorting figures and data. And this is very much related to the denialism of the state. And this has happened in the UN sessions and in COP25 and 26. And there are pieces of evidence showing the violations of human rights. This hearing is not related to public expenditure. We could have discussed this, but we should talk about what is happening with the cultural policies and the how. And we don't have much time, but there are two arguments that the government mentioned, which are related to financial aspects, and they are not very much true. First, they talked about how they were supposed to make a popular revolution and a real democratization of public policies. And they said something about affecting an elite that the government did not define, as Mr. Vaca explained. Of course, we are defending common artists, common men and women, and the intervention of the state are affecting many artists. They are marginalized. Not only the elite censorship is affecting popular artists. Secondly, it is obvious that we are defending the deep democratization of the distribution of the resources due to the Rouenne law. The distribution of resources as a cultural policy has been in place since 2007, proposed by Gilberto Gil, a great artist that at that time was the Minister of Culture. Of course, we support the redistribution, but this is not what we are discussing here. here. This is why we urge the state to explain respecting the civil society and this commission their performance or lack of it, if, the, if it is true that it is respecting human rights, artistic freedoms. And I would like to bring five cases. Why is it that the ministry is interrupting audiovisual projects after, for example, some films related to LGBT issues were actually stopped, the fundings were stopped? Why Foundation Palmares is censoring biographies of black people and removing the name of black people and why is it that the president is requesting the end of the black movement why is it that the government is investigating journalists journalists and artists that were criticizing bolsonaro's government and finally why is it that you are prohibiting in the secretariat of culture in the law of or in the framework of the law of promotion of culture of non-binary language the state has not responded in the past and they have not responded today it will be very important for them to answer today because if not we are just going to be repeating what we've been doing before we had 170 cases and only three are from previous governments before 2019. 125 cases of this 170 are related to the federal executive power. 30% of them are related to marginalized population due to race, sexual orientation or gender issues. And this is a list analyzed through a thorough analysis in order to monitor the authoritarianism in general. Therefore, I am bringing you concrete data and the government should stop using abstract statements because we know I am a professor of constitutional law and it is very important to discuss the reality and not about what the constitution says. The intimidation state created in Brazil is affecting professors, journalists and several artists. And this is related to fake news, stigmatization, concrete interference and harassment. And this is generating self-censorship, fear, and this is affecting very much democracy. Therefore, we would like to send the commission, if you want to, a detailed description of what we have explained. And we would like to tell you once again that we would like to have the monitoring, a visit to the country, and the formal questioning of the Brazilian state and the adoption of international standards on freedom of artistic activities 
And I would like to congratulate the commission for the last announcements of the publications that were done. So thank you very much. Gracias a Profesor Homner. Alguien más desea hacer uso de la palabra de su parte social civil? Thank you, Professor. Uh, I don't know if anybody else from civil society would like to take the floor. My name is Guillermo Varela of the mobile movement. I'd like to highlight uh, something that was mentioned by Professor Conrado and through many of the complaints that were made, it's very important for the commission to know about this. Sometimes the argument brought up by the uh, state that is not censoring or dismantling uh, the institutions or persecuting with an authoritarian approach this has to do with bureaucracy today. We, the state is full of bureaucratic files. This is not a censorship like the one ex that existed during the dictatorship, that there was a special department in charge of that. This is a censorship that is part of common and everyday uh, files so that, um, that hinders the cultural expression and the different institutions cannot provide financial support to the artists. So that has to do with unilateral cancellations and through abusive contracts with abusive clauses against artists and through delays and sometimes the state delays certain funding, analyzing the political profile of the artists to know whether these uh, can be included uh, in their uh, cultural um, uh, plans. And these policies have to do with certain follow-ups that are in charge of the uh, state. It has to do with uh, gender, with LGBTI issues and racism as well. Nowadays, there are true uh, administrative and bureaucratic proceedings e and it's important for this commission to take measures about this. There is a bureaucratic criminalization of this cultural sector and a dismantling of its institutions. Thank you. Thank you. The civil society is now without more time. Now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state for 10 minutes. We would like to answer some questions, but as I have highlighted, there is an attempt to use censorship uh, to attack public control and totalitarianism and censorship that not, do not exist in this government. I think that some uh, questions are very important. First of all, regarding uh, intellectual property, the uh, Brazilian state considers this to be very important. And there is a bill uh, presented by the Secretary uh, Secretariat of Culture to protect any product, regardless of uh, the ideology of the artists so that uh, big companies and uh, technological platforms could not interfere with those products. We know that intellectual property belongs to the privacy of uh, an individual, to its singularity. It, and all the uh, characteristics that make up an individual. So that uh, it's important for you to know that we value intellectual property. The biggest mechanism to promote culture is this bill that we mentioned. And we do this a lot, um, does not allow the government to aesthetically value um, a product, an artistic product. The legislation of the country does not allow the subjective, subjective um, value of these addictive products. There's a product in the Secretariat of 
culture that analyzes technical, legal, objective uh, characteristics of a project. After all these requirements have been complied with, if that project is in fact a cultural product because we identify um, through this law certain uh, activities that are not cultural activities such as journalistic or political activities there was um, um public resources were used in wrong way you know the financing activities that were not cultural activities and once those requirements have been complied with those projects are forwarded to a commission that also analyzes objective requirements. And once this uh, process is completed, the person that is requesting that funding through private company, um, these companies can contribute uh, with uh, funding the private company through an exemption of taxes uh, selects the project that uh, the company will support. We, the state does not carry out a subjective or aesthetic analysis of the project. This is a, an objective analysis. The demand of different requirements for you that constitutes um, censorship, but that is not the case. There are 13 billion reais that have been invested. And now what we do is in fact analyze whether these are cultural activities or projects or not. With the uh, with the national public control, we are going through an auditing process to guarantee that resources are allocated in a transparent way and that there is a decentralization of resources. We have invested three million real, uh, three billion reais as well um, through the different municipalities in a um, decentralized way. And the municipalities decided how to distribute those resources. Another uh, thing that was mentioned about the Jazz Festival This um, argument that was mentioned was not the argument that was used to cancel the, this just It doesn't have to do with the project. The festival was an anti-fascist uh, festival. And without discussing whether fascism is okay or not, I think that we all condemn fascist practices, but this festival that was presented as a pro-democracy, anti-fascist festival, this was um, a political festival. It was not a cultural product. If they had shown to us that their goal was to carry out a jazz festival, it could have been approved regardless of uh, of how, of if it was about anti-fascism or not. But the problem is that it was sold as a political um, festival. And we want to make sure that resources are allocated only to cultural activities. This was presented to media outlets as an act of persecution. And this, uh, is not a matter of political persecution. There is no censorship in Brazil. He can carry out his uh, project through public, through private initiatives and, and the funding of private companies. This cultural event 
regardless of its uh, political beliefs, he can present that before the Secretariat and it can be approved, as well as other activities that were not approved. And uh, another project was rejected because it had to do with journalism, with human rights, and they were denied because of the content of the project. Another point that has been mentioned regarding Palmares, which is a foundation of the Special Secretariat of Culture. We want to rescue um, policies to for the Black community in our country. There are there was never segregation or apartheid in our country. The president of the foundation was um, making uh, this course and this speech and there's no no censorship this uh, speech said that um, we are all brazilians regardless of our race or our social class with regard in regards to with the secretariat there was a strong commitment of the ministry of public expenses to reduce public expenses within the infrastructure that's why we have a special secretary that is holding a position similar to that of a minister. There is, we still have independence regarding public policies because we are part of that institutional bureaucratic structure, but the state of culture has not been diminished. This enables the bureaucratic management the main concept of the government is a general global concept that has to do with um, doing away with that idea that culture is just for an elite, but for the society as a whole. This is a government that is not focused on a certain class. It is devoted to all classes. It does not separate any classes. It encompasses all individualities. And this uh, concept of a uh, common man, and this encompasses the plurality of individuals existing in Brazil. And that occurs because when we uh, assess the public policies that existed in the previous Ministry of Culture, 10% of the biggest company in Brazil were monopolizing 80% of public expenses. And that is not uh, popularizing culture, which is our goal. Regarding the ways in which we can guarantee the participation of the state and the civil society and this uh, dialogue, there are several mechanisms for the participation of the civil society. I don't like to talk about civil society because it seems that this is a separate society and we are part of one society, we belong to the same structure of values. So the participation of some persons in some specific areas or activities, um, for example, we have the National Plan of Culture with the participation of the Congress, the federal government, NGOs, uh, members of the society, specific institutions, and the public policies encompass the macro structure at the cultural level. Okay, we need to conclude the hearings because we're running out of time. Can I add some uh, information? So in connection with the Brazilian state, we understand the uh, culture is very important. We are committed to freedom of expression and we adopt real policies in regarding freedom of expression. So we have highlighted our uh, financial support uh, to guarantee popular participation. Thank you.
Thank you, petitioners. Thank you, representatives of the state. Thank you, Jan Jarab. And thank you to my colleagues. One of the goals of our hearings is to promote dialogue, a dialogue between civil society and the state around issues of concern. I think that this being a good starting point of a dialogue, but I believe that we need to continue dialoguing on this issue. Uh, during this hearing, we have identified expressions of concern regarding freedom of expression and artistic uh, and ideological expression in Brazil. I'm really concerned regarding the judicialization initiated against Professor Conrad Hubner uh, just for publishing a paper in a publishing house and then in a newspaper in Brazil. I think those things are a concern since they limit this right that is freedom of expression and press, uh, freedom of press. I'd like for this dialogue to continue. Uh, petitioners mentioned 170 cases of alleged censorship. And it would be good that civil society organizations, the pertinent authorities of the state could meet to clarify these facts. I'm sure according to this hearing that the state is committed to respecting and guaranteeing freedom of expression, artistic freedom, academic freedom, and uh, there are policies for that and resources allocated to support cultural movements. As a result, uh, there should not be any cases of censorship of those cultural expressions. That is my respectful uh, message for the protest. I would like to thank civil society organizations for coming to the commission during this period of sessions. I also would like to thank the state for being here today and for participating in an open and honest way. I would like to echo some of the words of Ms. Daniela Mercury. We need to continue working so that Brazil continues to be a great democracy. Thank you, and I'm adjourning this hearing. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you.